Happy Thursday. Great to be with you. As you know, on Thursdays, we take a look at part of our upcoming gospel reading for the weekend. This is a pretty famous gospel reading. Maybe you remember it. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, grant us to sit, one at your right and one at your left, in your glory. Probably every parent out there hears this moment from James and John and can relate to a time when kid walks up and asks you to say yes in advance without hearing the whole of it. In my family, I can tell just by the sound of their voice that they're about to ask me to spend some money. Ask us do for us whatever we ask. Jesus is smart enough, of course, to say, what is it that you want? One of the things that interests me about this verse or verses is pretty simple. What I think jumps off the page at us is that we know the disciples are imperfect people. They're people. And yet, they are kind of heroes and they're the ones that get to walk with Jesus, get to watch him work miracles. They're the ones that left their nets at the side of the sea to follow him. Their lives changed dramatically to be the disciples of Jesus. They often say silly stuff. They often serve as funny examples of people who don't quite get it, even though they should get it. But moments like this, I think, still come as a little bit of a surprise. James and John, they're not just two of the 12 disciples. They are that, but they're not just that. They're also part of that little group that Jesus often takes with him for even excursions inside the excursion. He'll grab Peter, James, and John. They're the ones that, you know, get to see even extra amazing stuff. So it just comes as a surprise that two of them, brothers, walk up to Jesus and say, we want positions of authority and power and grandeur. To sit at the right and the left, you know, this is like old school king stuff. There are positions of affluence and power. Important counselors sit there. You know, maybe the heir to the throne or something like that. That's what they want. Jesus, of course, is going to change direction and remind them that those positions aren't his to give and that they really don't even know what they're asking for. But the reason why I think it's an important verse or a couple of verses for us to think about is it's a reminder for us that even though you and I belong to Jesus, the Son of Man who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, even though that is the core of who we are, these kinds of feelings and aspirations, they can still well up inside of us. It happens to James and John, certainly can happen to you and to me. So it's something we always need to be on the lookout for, to make sure that as we follow Jesus, we're remembering that we follow the one who did indeed come to serve not the one who came to wield authority and power. Those things matter in our world, and they matter in our lives. They do not matter in the kingdom of God. As I was scribbling down notes for this devotion, I started whistling to myself, Lord, help us walk your servant way. So I grabbed my hymnal, page through it, found it, and decided to use verse 1 as our closing prayer. Here's how we we'll close. We pray. Lord, help us walk your servant way wherever love may lead, and bending low, forgetting self, each serve the other's need. Amen. As always, can't thank you enough for joining us for these daily devotions a handful of times a week. Appreciate that you're out there watching. Appreciate the comments that you give. See you next time.